ask you about what a debate that's going on in the uh, International Criminal Court, though, the International Court of Justice in mm -hmm. The Hague. Uh, they're seeing a case being brought the first day today by South Africa, of all countries. You probably have... I mean, just been in South Africa at Christmas, lovely country, but they maybe have their own problems they need to look at before they worry about anywhere else. Uh, but they are yeah. claiming that Israel is guilty of genocide in Gaza. Now, you've been out in the Middle East, you're, you're, you're currently in the West Bank, you've been into Gaza with the Israeli Defense Forces, you weren't able to roam freely as an independent reporter yourself. But do you think that those claims of genocide, do you think they have any foundation? Well, first of all, absolutely not. I mean, uh, uh, as I've mentioned to you before, Julia, I mean, the population of the Gaza has grown by almost a million in the last uh, uh, 16 years. So it's a very strange type of genocide where the population actually increases. Uh, There's a couple points that are done by Douglas Murray that I do, in fact, agree upon. The first thing that he's actually correct about is the fact that the Palestinian population has only increased over time then actually decrease over time. It's also worth pointing out that South Africa is also well known for persecution against white farmers. They look really hypocritical for that particular issue. That said, we simply cannot ignore the comments that were directly done by the Israeli government ever since October the 7th have occurred. Most normal people would agree that what happened on October the 7th is absolutely unexcusable. And it's the same thing with the actions that have been said directly by officials within the Israeli government. This comment right here directly says it's time for a nutbug too. Another comment says right here, your expectation is that tomorrow morning we'll drop what amounts to some kind of nuclear bomb on all of Gaza flattening them, eliminating everyone there. There is one and only one solution, which is to completely destroy Gaza before invading it. I mean destruction like what happened in Hiroshima without nuclear weapons. This statement also came directly from the Israeli Prime Minister. You must remember what Amalek has done to you, says our Holy Bible, and we do remember and we are fighting our brave troops and combatants who are now in Gaza or around Gaza and in all other regions in Israel are joining this chain of Jewish heroes, a chain that has started 3,000 years ago from Joshua Ben Nun until the heroes of 1948, the Six-Day War, the 70th October war and all other wars in this country are hero troops. They have one supreme main goal to completely defeat the murderous enemy and to guarantee our existence in this country. We've always said never again, never again is now. When Netanyahu was talking about the whole entire Bible verse, he was referring to the first Samuel chapter 15 verse 3 where it says, Go and smite Alamek and utterly destroy all that they have, and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, axe and sheep, camel and ass. In other words, he is calling for the complete eradication of entire people group. In conclusion, what happened on October the 7th is awful. Hamas are terrorists, they're not freedom fighters, and Israel has a right to defend itself. At the same time, the Israeli government has been incredibly irresponsible by making these comments like these. And they do need some sort of trial for these comments.